when I got into cycling, I was the year before, I was just one year amateur and then I got a professional rider and as an amateur I knew about doping in the sense that you get information about doping from the newspapers, you, you hear that this guy is doped. Or, so there was always for me it was not obvious but I think there was always a small doping problem in cycling but I did not really care because as an amateur I was never asked to do something and no one ever gave me something. I was not um, really pushed to perform at, over my levels or over my, my, my physical abilities. Uh, but still there was always uh, a little bit this um, comparison of your nation with other nations. Our national trainer would say, look in Italy, I think the, the amateurs are doping and and uh, I just want to tell it to you, it's here, here is not a level playing field. So you got this bug in your head already that um, there is something not okay. Uh, I, I always had a problem at that time because I realized that my national trainer, he was um, not pushing us to do something, but of course for him to keep his job he had to be successful. And by just putting this bug in your head, you always think of is there a level playing field on, and if I dope, is there a level play, playing field again? Is it all okay now? So it, there was, as I said, there was something, but I never used anything. And then when I got professional, um, I got dropped for half a year and I didn't know what was wrong with me. I thought I'm sick or I'm not talented or whatever. And then my team manager came to me and explained me how things work in professional cycling and that actually there is um, doping, it's widespread, everyone is doing EPO. Um, if I want I can join the program, it's paid and it's observed by the team and I don't have to have a bad consciousness because everyone is doing it. So actually um, there is level playing field again. 